Hello, Toby here, back on the Snorri Dev channel, and I'm here to show you how to use redstone ore and a bud switch to change this from going this way into going that way. Now, you may be thinking the redstone ore doesn't conduct electricity the same way redstone does, so it shouldn't work, right? Well, you know what a bud switch is. Let's show where it goes by default. By default, it'll turn to the right and go into the black area. However, if we decide that we want to go to the red area, there's a secret thing that we can touch, and you may notice it's all coal ore except for one piece. The redstone ore. It'll change the direction of the track, and I go to the red side. Now, I'll explain how this all works, but first I'm going to go into creative mode and explain the basics. First, redstone is actually two blocks, not one. I believe it's blocks 73 and 74. One is redstone ore in its default state. The other is, red, is glowing redstone ore, which is when you hit it or when you walk over it. I'm not exactly sure why Notch decided that would be a good idea, but it is. It gives off light when you hit it. Not a lot of light, but some light. And because it's two blocks, when you put it next to a bud switch, which means which is short for block update detector, it'll detect a block update. It's the same thing with furnaces, though I think it'd be much harder to start a furnace on the fly than just click a piece of redstone. This also works with fence gates and a few other blocks, but redstone is the only easy block to use that also blends in and can fit inside the wall or ceiling. First I'm going to start with what the block update detector switch is. What happened in the game when it became when pistons were released and 1.8 and everything, there was a glitch in the game that's now just a feature where if you powered a piston diagonally, it wouldn't go until you put a block there. Now the same thing happens when you unpower it, but the strange thing here is that until I broke that block, it didn't do anything. I'll show you again. There is nothing powering this piston, yet it's still in its open state, so once I break this block, it'll go away. So now I'm just going to show you how the application of redstone can be used in this system. We apply the switch and then we hit the piece of redstone. This turns it on, and when it turns off, it'll go off. Here, we can see how this can be used to apply something to light, or to power something. So we're gonna turn it on, nothing's being powered, but once we hit it, it powers something. That's the basic idea of how that works. The problem is this only works once, until it becomes unpowered, this won't reset. And, but, uh, sorry, until this becomes unpowered and a block update happens here, this won't reset. So this, no matter what happens, will always stay this way until I change it. So here we have a self-repowering boat switch. What happens here is if I were to hit the redstone, cause a block update, pushing the block out here, the power sent through the block into the redstone, goes to the goes to here, powers a torch, and at the same time, powers whatever power source you need to power, and then resets the bud switch. This all happens very quickly, and in plenty of time, so that by the time the redstone switches back, from being glowing redstone ore to being regular redstone ore, it'll re-block update this, causing it to reset. So, if I were to hit this, it would actually unpower that, just based on the way I made it. And if we waited here long enough, it would unpower, or repower. If I had inverted it, it would have worked the opposite way. Up here we have 
mechanism of the system I was just in. The redstone ore is below this piston, and here is the block that the power is sent through. What happens is when you click the redstone, 